This video is for the first part of topic 18, where we're solving quadratics that are given in vertex form. We're going to be doing this algebraically, but also looking at what the result is graphically. So remember, when we're solving quadratic equations, it means we are looking for values of x that make the equation equal to 0. Now, as we look to find these solutions, which are our answers, or also known as zeros, roots, or x-intercepts, um, we've been working on ways to solve if given in intercept form, if given in standard form, but we haven't talked about what happens when we're given in vertex form. Well, just like all those other methods, we have a direct algebraic method to help us solve from this particular form, and that is simply by taking the square root. So let's go ahead and look at this graphically. Where does the quantity x minus 3 squared minus 4 equals 0? Uh, this is in vertex form. hk is at 3, negative 4. Our a value here is a1, so it follows the normal quadratic pattern. 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, giving us the graph we see here, which gives us solutions at x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 5. Well, how can we get this same result, but from an algebraic standpoint, how can we get this result algebraically? Well, we're going to go ahead and use our process of solving by the square root. So, steps for this. The real first step here is that we want to actually identify that the equation we're given is in some type of vertex form. Uh, ideally, what we're looking for here is we're looking for the something squared, the quantity being squared from our vertex form, which we clearly see is x minus 3 quantity squared. That lets us know, hey, this equation is in vertex form, and the algebraic method we will use would be square root. The next thing we're going to want to do is try to work to isolate the something squared. So move all the other numbers to the other side of my equation, isolating the something squared. From there, to undo this squaring, we're going to go ahead and do a plus or minus square root on both sides of the equation. So why do we have a plus or minus square root? Well, normally when we're given a square root, we can imply it is the principal square root, the positive only. But anytime we introduce a square root into a problem, we're always going to have to include the positive and the negative case. So what this usually will look like is we will do a square root of both sides. Uh, we're going to be putting that square root usually on the left-hand side on top of my something squared. And what they will essentially do is they will undo each other, leaving me with whatever's left in parentheses all on its own. The plus or minus square root on the other side, we will have to deal with uh, as we simplify down. Uh, from here, all we're going to have to do left to go is just to solve for x, uh, getting our answers. So let's go ahead and apply this to our first problem that we have here. Uh, we're going to start by recognizing, yes, this is in fact vertex form. So we're going to go ahead and try to get this squared by itself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add 4 to both sides, giving me 1 times x minus 3 squared equals 4. Uh, we could divide both sides by 1 here. x minus 3 squared equals 4. That step's not really necessary, but showing it there anyways. Uh, we've now isolated the something squared. And what we're going to do now is take the square root of both sides, looking like this. Now, what that essentially does, since there's a plus or minus square root on both sides, is this square root will undo this squaring, leaving me with x minus 3 as the only thing left on this side. We've essentially gotten rid of the squaring, and this is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4. Now, plus or minus the square root of 4 is what we were working on simplifying yesterday. You should recognize that the square root of 4 is just a 2, leaving us with plus or minus 2. Now, it's very important here, plus or minus 2, uh, because if we look back over briefly to our graph, we saw that we had two solutions. Well, the only way we're going to get two solutions algebraically is if, in fact, we get or recognize that we have this plus or minus. So now, to isolate x, all we're going to do is just add 3 to both sides. Now, this last part looks a little bit weird. Just follow with me here. This side is left with x, and on this side, we have 3 plus or minus 2. Now, at this particular step, we have x isolated. We've solved for x. We now need to think about, can we actually simplify this down? Well, can you do 3 plus or minus 2? Well, can you do 3 plus 2? Can you do 3 minus 2? Yes, you can do that. 3 plus 2 is equal to 5, and 
3 minus 2 is equal to 1. Notice those are the same answers that we got when we approached this from a graphical standpoint. Same answer graphically that we got using our algebraic method. Sometimes we're not going to be able to go ahead and do this math. Sometimes we're just going to leave it as 3 plus or minus, for instance, the square root of 7. We wouldn't be able to add the square root of 7 or subtract the square root of 7 from 3 without it being really messy. So if we can simplify it, we will. Okay, let's take a look at another example going from the graphical attempt. At 2x, negative 2x plus 8 is equal to 0. Okay, negative 2x plus 8 equals 0. This is in fact in vertex form. Uh, it's te technically secretly hidden in vertex form. Negative 2 times x plus 0 squared plus 8 is equal to 0, giving us hk of 0, 8. Uh, this is the a value is negative 2, so it's the negative 2 of the normal pattern, giving us 1 negative 2 and 2 negative 8, giving us the graph and solution. x equals negative 2 and x is equal to 2. Well, let's go ahead and solve this from an algebraic standpoint and see whether or not we get the exact same answers here. Well, algebraically, again, we're going to go ahead and look to follow these steps again. No need to write them over again. We had to have it listed up above. Um, yes, this is in fact in vertex form. We are looking for where it's equal to zero, where it crosses the x-axis, the roots, the solutions. So we're going to go ahead and isolate our something squared here. So we're going to start off by subtracting 8, giving us negative 2 times x plus 0 squared equals negative 8. Uh, we can divide both sides by negative 2 here, giving me x plus 0 squared equals 4. We're now going to go ahead and do plus or minus the square root of both sides of my equation, giving me x plus 0 squared, and then the 4 is underneath here. This square root and this square undoes each other, so we're left with x plus 0, or just simply an x. And on this side, we have plus or minus 4 once again we know that this is equal to plus or minus 2. So in this case, we have nothing to add onto it, plus or minus 2. Hey, those were in fact my solutions that we just found from the graphical standpoint. Okay, now you may be wondering, well, if I have this ability to graph all of my answers, why do we even bother with this algebraic approach? Well, not every graph we give you, every equation we give you in vertex form, has nice x-intercepts. So, taking a look at this particular graph, we see that this is in vertex form, and if we wanted to go ahead and graph this, we see the vertex here is at negative 1, negative 5. Uh, but when I look here for the x-intercepts, and for to try to figure out these solutions, these are a little bit harder to find the exact values of. So going from this purely graphical standpoint is not going to be beneficial. So, let's go ahead and approach it from an algebraic standpoint. We're going to go ahead and work to, yes, this is vertex form. Let's isolate the something squared. So we're going to go ahead and add 5 to both sides first, giving me 4 times x plus 1 squared equals 5. Uh, we'll divide both sides by 4 here. x plus 1 squared is equal to, now 5 doesn't divide by 4 nicely, so I'm just going to leave it as 5 over 4. At this particular step, I'm going to do plus or minus the square root of both sides, giving me x plus 1 squared is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5 over 4. Now over here, squared and the square root will undo each other, giving me x plus 1 is equal to, now this looks a little bit weird, plus or minus the square root of 5 over 4. Let's talk about that. We may be thinking, you know, well, I don't know what the square root of 5 is, but I do know what the square root of 4 is. Well, to kind of get around this fraction, what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. That is a property that we are allowed to do. We know what the square root of 4 is, and that's in fact going to be a 2. So we can rewrite this as plus or minus the square root of 5 over that value that we know in the denominator, which is in fact going to be a 2. So it looks a little bit weird, but we're going to leave 1, square root of 5, can't be simplified down any farther. Square root of 4, we can know, is in fact going to be a 2. Now to isolate x, all we're going to do is just subtract 1 from each side. 
Um, as we look at this, well, I don't really know what negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2 is, so I'm not going to go crazy. I'm just going to leave my answer as negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. That is, in fact, going to be my final answer for this particular problem. Okay, We can't physically do the math here, negative 1 plus or minus square root of 5, root 5 over 2, so we're just going to leave it in this exact answer. This is called exact form. Okay, all right. So there's the examples of solving by the square root method, looking when I get real answers, answers that could show up on the number line. Uh, what you're gonna need to do now is fire up your computers and I want you to go try uh, this Khan Academy. It's been assigned to you already. Uh, it's no solving involved. You don't actually need to get the answers to this. All we're going to be doing is organ, ordering the steps of certain problems. So here, uh, in this particular problem, uh, 3 times x squared plus 1, uh, x plus 1 squared is equal to 108. If I were to ask you to order the problems as what we would do, um, this is a drop and drag idea. So if I were to solve this, I'd divide both sides by 3. So I'd drop and drag that into the first box. Uh, next thing I would probably do would be to take the square root of both sides. So I'd drop and drag that into the next option. That would get rid of it, and then I'd probably would go ahead and subtract 1 from each side. So I'll grab this and drop this into the box and go from there. Uh, you only need to get, in terms of this, uh, I'm only really looking for 3 of 4 or 4 of 4, just to kind of get a little bit of confidence going for you. Uh, from there, what we're going to do is I need you to go ahead and work on questions number 1, 2, 3, and 4. Key is posted on the sideboard. Uh, and online for you to take a look at, uh, and then jump on to the back side of our notes to do topic 18b, which we'll pick up in the next video.